People forget that Insania, like No-Tail, was a champion in Han, and if you give him enough time, I think he'll prove to be a champion here as well. Aiden, as a child, he was very fast, very quick to learn. He could make a connection with the whole world, with those language he had. What makes Aiden so unique is his openness and communication. He always wants like the best for the team and the best for everyone. The strive towards the game makes the team move forward. I could see him as a scholar, I could see him being a lawyer. We're just lucky that he decided to choose Dota. Aiden was born in 1994 uh, in Uppsala. It's a famous university town in, in the north of Stockholm. He was uh, not easy and not hard. Um, the only thing that bothered me was that he was not sleeping a lot. Otherwise, he was very cute. So my family consists of my mom and my dad, and uh, I have a younger sister who's six years younger than me. He was actually a very good older brother. Usually when another kid comes into the picture, uh, you hear like the other kid gets jealous and all of that, but he, he was never jealous. My parents are both from Iran, um, so we're Persian. Both me and my sister are born in Sweden and we grew up there, so most of our lives we've spent in Sweden. I didn't, as a child, he was very, he was very clever and he found out that his level of IQ is very high. He was very fast, very quick to learn. My, my dad worked a lot with me when I was very young. I think my parents started teaching me both Swedish and Persian at the same time. So I, I was bilingual by like the age of two or something. I spoke both Swedish and Persian quite fluently. I was really fast when it came to this stuff. We moved to uh, America, to uh, Dallas, uh, where my wife's brother lives, when Aydin was for about five years uh, old. The challenge maybe for Aydin uh, was to learn English. The school in the uh, in United States. The only thing I can tell you, he came back with a wet trousers. <laughs> I didn't know how to ask to go to the bathroom in English. So I ended up doing what most uh, first graders do, which is peeing my pants. And that was my first day of school in America. The way I remember it is we decided to go to America to visit cousins there. When we first arrived at their house, like I didn't speak any English, so they were sitting and playing video games and I'd pretty much never heard of video games before. I'd always been like playing soccer or like hanging out with friends. Shadio. Hi! And they were playing, I think, Pokemon Stadium on the Nintendo 64, if I recall correctly. And I saw this, like, character die on the screen, and I just went like, oh no! Oh! We're sorry! And that was, like, basically the extent of the English that I knew at the time. Everything started in the USA because uh, his cousins play a lot of games. If I wanted to, like, fit into their group, I had to, like, find a way to connect to them. And I think, like, by being good at games, that was, like, the way to do it. And then yeah, over the course of the year, my English got better. I used to do like a lot of extra homework and like try to like learn language and like try to keep up with everybody else. I think the most reason um, for him to learn English was to communicate with his cousins. <laughs> Every language uh, open a new world for you because with that language, you can connect with a lot of people. I think the biggest reason and uh, that I didn't make so many friends was that he was, uh, he had a very good communicative skills. I would only really get a new game, like maybe once a year or twice a year tops if I, if I was like, uh, really insistent about it. So well, basically I would have like maybe like five games for my N64 that I had for like, I don't know, five, six years. 
he always mentioned that it was a good thing we did for him. <laughs> Didn't buy a lot of games. <laughs> he, he played the game until it was finished. I played the same games over and over again and that like made me good at games because I would only play a few games but I'd be very good at the ones I played. I think that really shaped me and it gives you like the right attitude towards learning where like even if something's difficult you don't drop it and put it aside because you have some other choice that's like easier to do. And I started playing on my mom's like work laptop and my cousins were playing Guild Wars and that became like the game that I think like really sparked my passion for like competing because that's where I got a lot of online friends and I started talking to people very frequently. I can't recall the exact age at which I started to play competitive in Han, but I think it must have been around like 15, 16. Our team at the time wasn't very good. We were just like a bunch of friends that had made a team together and uh, we were just kind of like playing tournaments because we thought it was fun. We managed to qualify for the equivalent of RTI at the time, which was DreamHack Summer. We were just literal nobodies. Like, I don't think anyone really thought we were that good. And we managed to get third. And then at that point, I think we started viewing ourselves as like pretty good players. I was playing with a guy called Zai at the time. He was like 13 or 12. And then me and him decided to leave our team and join this like pretty stacked superstar roster. And we ended up winning DreamHack 2012, which for me was like beating Han almost. So that was a pretty big accomplishment and something I'm still very proud of to this day. The standard Persian family is like, you always want your kids to either become a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. So I think they had the similar aspirations for me when I was young. My dad probably saw me more so working in the medical field because both my parents are, they work in medicine. So yeah, probably some sort of doctor or something in that direction. I knew that he's very clever. I saw his future like me to get some academic um, education. We were not so happy about that he played so much. And I think it's, it's because of uh, our culture. Uh, I didn't understand him and I was very, very worried about his health and his future. Playing games was just for us playing, not to make sure that you have a good future. My plan was always to go to university, but you know, I just wanted to figure some stuff out before and I wanted to like, want to go when I wanted to go. We make every, everything to stop him. We take his uh, computer, we stop the router, we told him, you are not allowed to play more than one hour a day. I think truthfully in my life, my parents have never really been able to force me to do something I never wanted to do. So telling my dad that this is what I'm doing felt more like I'm telling him so that he knows rather than uh, like, I'm scared of what he's gonna tell me. Um, it, it wasn't re I wasn't really looking for his approval or trying to fi ask him to say like, what do you think about this? It was more like a, hey, I've made my decision. This is what it's gonna be like. At that time, uh, when I, I didn't, didn't want to go to the university, uh, I was shocked. But I think that uh, I was forced to accept and he wanted to be a professional player. The first time I recognized that Aydin was so good at gaming was uh, when I met a student uh, on my job and uh, I told him that my son is playing Heroes of New Earth. And then he asked me again, uh, which, um, is, that, he, is he playing in the team? And when I told the student that he was playing in the TDM, then he gets high. He said, what? He, oh, oh, is he playing at that team? Yes, uh, he's playing at that team. What is, what is it with that? Then uh, he says that he is, it's a very good team. I didn't try to stop the router and didn't shut down the computer <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I think something that a lot of people uh, ask me about is like, why did you stay in Han for so long? And the truth of the matter was, I thought the game was really fun. I kind of had to make a decision. If I wanted to commit to Dota, I had to make a big commitment and I had to be like, I had to treat it as a job and I had to treat it as like, hey, I'm gonna put a lot of effort into this and I'm gonna get good and I have to get good. There was a lot of thought that went into it. It was like, all right, do I really believe in myself? Do I think I can do it? Um, I think he was finished with uh, Heroes of the New Earth because he had reached uh, uh, the top of it. He came first and it was enough for him. In the past, 
he also always showed that when he gets um, best in one thing, they want to continue to another one. When I first switched from Han to Dora, there, there was definitely like this time period where you had to go from being someone that everybody knew and somebody that a lot of people respected to being a complete nobody. In Dora, nobody really cared who I was. And when I would tell someone to do something, they'd be like, hey man, why, why would I listen to you? Like, stop telling me what to do. It was emotionally draining for sure. And you had to like adapt and understand that, you know what, like everything you've accomplished over the past five years that you're really proud of, nobody else really cares about here. This is a new arena to prove yourself in. I wanted to kind of like create a team where, you know, we enjoyed just playing with each other. You enjoyed spending time together and therefore you also wanted to win for each other. That kind of idea is what sparked creating this roster. The original member that I always knew that I wanted to play with was Mickey, And I felt like this is the kind of person that you can build a team around. My first impressions of Insania was that he was pretty cocky. He kind of always called me out online when I was like just a kid. I loved him uh, actually, because uh, he was so different from the other supports that you had. Uh, he was kind of demanding and uh, he was very aggressive, so it kind of fit my playstyle perfectly. He was an easy choice. Then the next step was trying to find players that fit with our playstyles. We started looking at options from Han. Uh, Boxy at the time was probably the number two individual player after Mickey. We knew that he could grow into becoming like one of the best players in the world like he is today. Um, I think everyone that played Heroes of Nerf knew that Dora was like the bigger game, like a bigger competitive scene, more uh, bigger audience, more money, bigger tournaments. I would describe Aiden as a teammate as very passionate. I think that he always wants like the best for, for the team and the best for everyone and not only for himself. And then there was the last two slots. So there was this guy that we knew from Han, uh, Taiga, who just made the switch maybe like two months or three months before we decided to make this roster. And he was playing probably 20 games a day. And I'm not exaggerating, like it was crazy. I would go to bed, he was playing. I would wake up, he was playing. Yes, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> I played a lot. <laughs> when I was playing against Insane and Han, I thought of him as a really good captain. I think he is a strong communicator, definitely on the top. In Alliance, we put this roster together and we picked up Max. Max solved the problem of we're four Han players that just want to play like Han, but we are playing Dota. What I think I brought to the team is a lot of in-game knowledge. I think Dota can be quite different from Han in that regard. I think Aiden is a strong communicator. I think it's very important to, have, like, to lead a successful team. Adding Max into the mix, I think we really got like the final piece. We got this guy that had like the Dota understanding, the Dota experience, and he started taking objectives for us. And then like the thing kind of like team worked out well, and then we just grew and here we are today. Could be the case, they could still make Monet playing the Lash Rack in the safe lane too. I will say if I'm a Storm, I'd love to be in a situation where I'm against the Lash. As they're going to take the Gyrocopter for themselves, so this is going to be an awfully void. That, that is true. something that we definitely did not expect, right? But oh my god, oh are you serious? <laughs> Whatever. Did this just happen? I can fuck. Why didn't you say fuck? Okay, uh, uh, sorry guys. How about offlanes? Uh, I can also play mid gyro. Let's see what they pick, okay? Let's see what they pick. Don't pick yeah. your heroes, guys. Don't worry, don't worry. We got oh, this game. Game. I don't think oh. they My first reaction to the gyrocopter misclick was, I mean, I was feeling really bad for him. Uh, it was, I feel like he, he even like walked away after the game. He didn't really talk to us. I mean, he did. He said, I'm sorry guys, but we didn't know what to, how to react. I don't know, you support him. I remember at TI, Aiden, he had that faithful moment, you know, where he picked Gyrocopter by accident. And I think you could see how much everybody liked him right there because instead of, in my position, let me say, if I was younger, if I was like their age, like 21 and stuff like that, I would have been like, time to get a new captain, boys. Like. He just lost me millions of dollars, like my best opportunity. Because getting to TI is no guarantee. And the fact that they all supported him, they were like, hey, this is all gonna work out. I think that shows loyalty in both ways. Like He was so loyal to them throughout the years that they were gonna be loyal to him and stick by him. And look, the team, no roster changes or anything like that. In that moment where he needed them the most, they were the most supportive. I'm racking my head to think of a roster that's like stayed together this long. Even the OG team that's won twice, like before they won twice, they had broken up in some form. So I can't remember another time where this has really been the case. I think it's hard to answer why other teams don't stay together as five, but I think for our team, the 
primary thing that has made us stick together is that I genuinely think we enjoy each other's company, and I think we've all adapted our play styles to make each other fit. This team hasn't been created just by like us five fitting in perfectly with each other from day one. There's gone in a lot of effort and a lot of work. It's not like I ran the show and I made everyone play the way I wanted them to. Everyone got a little bit of their way and everybody had to adapt a little bit. So because everyone's put in so much into the roster, they feel like it's part of like something they've created. And I think that makes you want to stay and see it through till the end. So when we were in Alliance, I think people quite liked us because of the fact that our roster was just like, it looked like a bunch of friends that are just playing together and trying to become good. So at TI, when the gyro pick happened and all that stuff, we kind of felt like we didn't really get a chance to prove how good our team really is. After two years, there were some things that were getting stale. And then when we decided to, you know, that this chapter of our life was over and it's time to move over to something new, they immediately turned on us and we got a lot of hatred and they called us, they said that we betrayed Alliance and that like we stole their money and they invested time and effort into us and now we just like left them as soon as we started getting good. And it was quite shocking for me at least because these are people that, you know, over the past like two years have shown me nothing but love and nothing but support. And it felt like, you know, these guys like, like me for who I am and they like us for what we're doing. But um, yeah, after that transition, you kind of realize that that's not necessarily the case. So after we left Alliance, Victor asked us to take a meeting with him. And I'm a massive Team Liquid fan of the old roster and the org. So when I heard Victor was interested in talking with our team, it was like, it was probably one of the best days of my life so far. I first heard about Aiden in 2019 when him and the other players were making waves on the Dota circuit. What makes Aiden so unique is his openness and communication, his leadership by example, and I would say he's one of the most mechanically gifted captains in Dota right now. So there's a couple areas that we identified for this roster that were really appealing to us as an organization. I think maybe most important, the talent that these guys displayed playing Dota is incredible. They still needed a coach though, and that is where Blitz came in. Blitz helped us find the org when we decided that we wanted to leave Alliance. So I think Liquid, as a thank you to Blitz, decided to fly him out to our first boot camp in Malta. And the plan was originally just that he was gonna be there and hang out and have a good time and enjoy, you know, Malta. Me and Max started slowly bugging Blitz about like, hey man, what do you think of coaching? I know you coached Liquid before and that went pretty well, right? So how about giving it another shot? And he's like, hey, nah, I'm over the whole competing life. That's not really for me. And then I started sending Max on him and every single day Max would poke him a couple times a day and be like, hey, Will, coach us. Will, coach us. He had Max uh, quick for asked me about 25 times. He's like, do you want to be coach? I was like, no. And I kept saying no. And then eventually after about, I want to say three days, he said, do you want to be coach though? And I said, mm, okay, let me think about it. And then I thought about it and I was like, all right, I can do this. I don't know if you'll believe me, but uh, at the time I wasn't really sure. I was very, I liked Aiden a lot and I liked the guys a lot. I thought everyone was really easy to work with, but I didn't really know. So I just kind of flipped a coin and then, yeah, I was like, okay. So that's kind of how I came to my decision. I think originally when we joined Liquid, we had the pressure of like, comparing ourselves to the old team. That team didn't have any placement below like what, top six, top eight. And their recent results were like, they had one TI, they had gotten third place, I think, or fourth place actually, and then they got second place. But the cool thing about Liquid was, Victor always kept messaging me after tournament losses or wins. and be like, hey, don't think about it too much. Like, he would always be very supportive of us. And it, it was amazing. It was a really, really good feeling to know that you had the support of the org, regardless of like how your results went early on or not. Sometimes when rosters or players that are not used to winning at a championship level join Team Liquid, they can actually experience a lot of pressure from being a part of such a, a large organization with such a storied history. And something we like to do is take that pressure away as soon as possible. Um, teams and rosters need time to develop and nobody's going to benefit from being under immense pressure. And uh, we feel like that is the way to eventually end up winning championships. 
I would say there's basically two key reasons for why the core of this roster has been able to play with each other for so long. And the first is a deep belief in each other's ability to figure things out within Dota. And the second part is, once you have that deep belief in each other, you have to speak with each other, you have to communicate openly, and that's what this team is used to doing. I think our roster is extremely strong when we put in a lot of effort and when all five of us are able to focus on putting in a lot of effort at the same time. And Zane has a good captain because he's very collaborative. Uh, he listens to us a lot and he uses the, the, our stupid ideas to make them work. I think Aiden takes a lot of responsibility. Um, sometimes when it's not even his fault, I think he tries to like justify it in a way. I think that because everyone feels like they have a value or they're being like trusted in a way. I think it makes makes it so that everyone on the team wants to win together. I think what makes Insane a good leader is that he's, he treats everyone with the same respect. He's almost always very cheerful. Um, I think the drive towards the game makes the team move forward, which I think is very important. I think that Aiden, since he was little, he, he was like a leader. It feels strange. Like when people recognize him, to me, he, you know, he's Aiden, he's just my older brother and it's this whole like weird aspect to it. I don't know, it just feels strange, but it feels very good at the same time. I'm very happy for him. He's a communicative person. He could make a connection with the whole world, with those language he has. Today when I'm looking back, I'm very ha happy that I didn't kill his dream. And I think over the years, stuff like that, this happened both to my dad and to my mom. And they started going more and more accepting. And eventually, I think they even started getting interested. And nowadays, like, they will watch all of our games and they're yelling like crazy soccer fans uh, if you find them, like, at the right times. Woo! They're winning! It's... So, yeah, no, my parents are super into it now. GG is called. Liquid will take this game. And with that, the series, the championship title, it's theirs. As they are your ESL1... Oh, yeah. one... 2020 online. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I'd like to thank my parents. I know they're watching at home and they're like super excited right now. Big shout out to my parents, my little sister. Honestly, probably the biggest person to thank is Victor and uh, the opportunity they've given us to be a part of Team Liquid. And, and then a massive shout out to William Blitz. I'd say probably the best coach in the world. I think communication is at the core of like a tier one team. Because most of the players that reach this level of gameplay are very, very good and they're very talented. The differentiating thing becomes like communication and stuff like that. So I do think it's extremely important. I think that's like one of the final steps that you have to take as a team in order to become the best.